Page 11, the Calico Cat. 4-4 four, four time, no sharps or flats. So C major or A minor. Well, look at the end. Last couple majors, we're here. Sounds A minor to me. I'm guessing A minor here. Right hand first. Let's make sure we got the notes and the rhythms in the fingering. We're starting here on the A. You should know that note is an A. Just by glance, it's two ledger lines below the treble clef. It's an A. Just know it. One and two and. One and two and three and rest and. During the rest you come up. And that's a D. Then you can, second line, you come back down and do it again for the most part. Let's go down to the third line. You're up, you in the second line here. Here, so you're in this position because in the third line, that first note is an E, and you should know that just it's three ledger lines above the treble clef. It's an E. I think, in my opinion, you should know the notes three ledger lines above or below either staff just instantly know them. When you start getting four and more, it's hard to know how many ledger lines they are. You kind of have to count them because they get all blurred together, at least I do. But three, I can tell there's three just by glancing at it. I don't have to count them. So I just memorize those notes. It's an E. So it's one and two and three. One and two and three. Cross over. Doing your scales like you're supposed to, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be a problem. Then going on, it's the same thing in octave low, and so forth. Last line. The left hand's helping you out with the eighth note stuff, and then you're playing in, the, in measure 19. You have that A chord, A minor, and then the 5 7 chord. If you have big hands and fat fingers, you can do a 2 on that. Otherwise, a 1 is fine, and the here. Right. Left hand. And here it's broken chords. It's an A minor chord. And then here. And that's okay until the end of the second line. You have to come up here. It's an A and an E. And then back down. Whole notes. And then down here, same thing, an octave lower. I recommend a fifth finger on that E. This is measure 16. Fifth finger here because you got it here. You're in position for the next E. And then you can collapse the hand. And then the eighth notes. One and two and three and rest and. Rest and. And then you five seven chord, one chord. And the last note, that is three ledger lines below. That is an A. Two ledger lines is a C, right? It's an A. Put the hands together. One and two and three and play a legato right now. Watch out on the last two measures, first line. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and then you do that some more. Let's go down to the third line. You're here. One and two and three. Not fun. So work out all the notes and the rhythms, and then we put in the articulation. Staccatos. I do a nice light wrist staccato. I think it's fun. So I have some rest. And that has an accent on it, so get a little extra oomph. I'll get to the dynamics in a minute. We're just doing staccatos and accents and that stuff. Second line is very similar. Third line. Now this is legato here. And even in the left hand, keep a legato. There's nothing marked, but keep a legato. So it's one and two. All connected. Until the last note's a staccato. And then again... Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And there's an X 
accent on that last note. A little, little extra oomph. Then we add the dynamics. Moderate little, this goes to the whatever hand has the melody. In this case, the right hand to start. You decide what moderately loud is. And you're going to gradually crescendo up to loud. Don't get loud until that last measure, the first line. And then it's an accent on top of it, which actually makes it very loud. It's whatever. And then you do that again, and then on the third line, now you're soft. That's the right hand. The left hand has to be very soft. You come up just a little bit to moderately soft, and now you're moderately loud in the right hand. Get a little louder. Up to loud, and now you moderately loud. This both hands here, moderately loud. Molto crescendo means a lot. Molto is a lot. Crescendos get louder. Get louder a lot. Get a lot louder. Whatever. I don't know. One, two. And it's, they're only telling you to go up to loud there at the end, so that's not a molto crescendo. Otherwise, you got to come back down because if you do a molto crescendo, you're going to get up to very loud on that. Start with measure 17 when you start. That's very loud. There. And then you come back down to loud. I don't know that I like that. I would prefer to, rather than a multo crescendo, I'll just crescendo up to loud and be done with it. Different ways of interpreting the music. Now, speed-wise, lively, well, it has to be accurate. So don't, these eighth notes got to be even. heavy-duty cat, if you ask me. With me. I just can't imagine a cat getting loud like that. Cats are rather light. <laughs> That's my impression of the piece. I would prefer you not copy me on it. Get to know it well enough. You play it at your lively, your speed, whatever it is. They give metronome markings up there, but those are suggestions. So you decide how lively you feel at the moment. It'll be different speeds at different times, but you interpret it as you see fit. I would like to play it with you very slowly just to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do the dynamics, just notes and rhythms. So I'll give us four counts and let's do it slowly together. One, two, ready and go, and one, and two, and four, and. Four and one and two and three and four and three and four and one and two and three and four and and two. Four and one and two and three and four. 
four, and one. Rest, rest, rest.